Glory to God. It has been 20 weeks since we started that In Him Scripture study in Galatians. And this week, this is week one of a a study in Ephesians. Uh, It just seems like yesterday we started Galatians, but now today we're going to be starting in the book of Ephesians. It's one of my favorite books. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the first chapter and the third chapter, we read part of that every time we do this weekday podcast. Because that's part of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Paul went out of his way to show the Ephesians how much God loves them. And we, we literally pray those prayers five days a week on this podcast, Monday through Friday, We go through Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, part of both chapters, and and, and read it and and proclaim them in Jesus' name that that what is is said in those chapters are ours. And and I, I, I thank God for the opportunity and the ability to be able to do that because I want the world to know what God wanted the Ephesians to know through Paul, that he loved them. And he cared for him. And this is week one that we're going to to get into what Paul was talking to the Ephesians about. So I, I'm I'm very excited about it. Now I want to, I want to take this time to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you're doing. What you've done through the Christmas holidays, God will. I'm, I promise you, He's going to bless what we have accomplished in this ministry through prayers, through the help, the financial help, that every partner that partner with us on a regular basis, but especially what they've done at Christmas time to get these pizzas into the, these jails and, and, and to see people's lives change by just giving somebody something good to eat with no strings attached. Just being able to just to walk in and, and, and love on people when, when they feel like they're unlovable. That's what God's all about. He's, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repent. And we have purposed in our heart at Prodigal Son Ministries to help people see that every day we do something. Every day we do a podcast. Every day I go in the jail. When I'm out in public, we are striving so into people God's Word and, and see people's lives change through the truth of it. Now, I want to encourage you. Go back to June 21st of 2021 and start this entire study with us. Do you realize in, in uh, June of this year, not too many months from now, that we will have been in this In Him Scripture study for three years. Three solid years we've been teaching people what God says about them in Christ Jesus and encouraging them to grow in that knowledge, go, grow in that strength. I'm going to tell you, God's people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And we need to know what God's Word says. We need to know what He wants for us in our lives through the truth in God's Word. That's the reason we do that. So I encourage you to go back to June 21st of 2021 and go through this In Him Scripture study all the way through Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and now we're starting on week one in Ephesians. I'm going to tell you something. You'll grow in this, in this study if you'll just let God feed you His Word. That's what this, this podcast is all about, teaching the Word of God, what thus saith the Word, and leaving the religion out of it, leaving the world out of it, but teaching people what the Word says to them, for them, and about them in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior. Glory to God, I have a privilege again, once again, to bring you Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to to know and understand and realize the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God had for them. And that is my desire for every person that walks this planet, that they come to realize and know how much God cares, how much He loves them, how much He cares for them, how much He wants them 
to walk in that love. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your heart's will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at, God, a place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler, or authority, or power, or leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ, and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And He and may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he shows me that love more and more every day. That's my. That's the reason I do these podcasts, because I want you to hear that love, to know that love, and to see what God is saying through Paul to the Ephesians, and take it for yourself. Believe it for yourself. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Lord, touch me. Use me for your honor and your glory. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Now, we're in the fifth or the sixth verse of Ephesians 1. The King James Version says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now, (laughs) I'm going to tell you something. That took me a long time to get a hold of that God accepted me because of my past had just jumped up in my face every time I turned around. And it's like, you know, I just, I couldn't get over my past. But I understood something, finally understood something, that I was accepted in Jesus, that Jesus paid for my past. And I didn't have to live in that downtrodden, beaten down, just awful state of mind that I'd lived in all my life. The the New Living Translation says, So we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. Praise God for what? For the grace that He has poured out. That's an unmerited favor that we need more than anything to understand and know that he's for us. What now? What's the Amplified Classic say? It says, "So that we might be a, what, what, so that we might be to the praise and the condemnation, co- com- commendation of his glorious grace, favor, and mercy, which he has so freely bestowed on us in the beloved. He has given us his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior." But you got to look at this King James Version, wherein he hath made us accepted in Christ, in the beloved. He has accepted us in him. Now, 
I know somebody's going to say, well, are you telling me that God will accept me the way I am? He sure will. He he sure will. But I'm going I'm to tell you something. When God saves you, he's not going to leave you in that shape. When, you, when God's spirit comes into your heart and into your life, I'm going to assure you that his spirit, somewhere along the line, will start teaching you where you're wrong, where you're, uh, you've are you got led astray, where you're uh, just in the wrong spot. I, I'm going to say this. I lived a lot of years as a born-again child of God in my early 20s, into my, you know, into my early 30s. I, well, I was about 30 years old when I uh, just give up, give up and quit. And... And, but that whole time I lived as a born again Christian and struggled in it. And, and, you know, I couldn't see myself accepted as I, as I was. And I was really trying to do what I was supposed to do. I wasn't half in, half out. I wasn't backslid. I wasn't being a hypocrite. I'd done everything I needed to do to live a Christian life. But, Somewhere, something would just nagged at me to the point that that I just couldn't, I couldn't uh, really uh, get past the fact of all that I had done, and the devil wasn't gonna let me to let me get past it. He didn't want me to get past it. He wanted me to just continue doing what I was doing and 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 struggle in that. And God don't want that. He don't want us in that, nothing in the world. He wants us to grow strong in who we are, not uh, in ourselves, not in the, uh, the, the, just the, our conduct. No, he wants us to walk in who we are in Christ Jesus and, and find that in ourselves and, and, and be re- our, have our minds renewed to what God says. Because I promise you something. There's something out there's something that God wants to do in your life and he wants to put you on the right path so that you can be strong. So that you can come to the realization that that you are who he says you are instead of how you feel. And you've got to come to know and realize that look that that uh God wants you to be strong and uh, live in what He has made you to be in Christ, not in in your uh, not in your your goodness, but in His goodness. Be careful about what I just said about trying to uh, live in your goodness, because when you start living in the law, we've been talking about that forever. But trying to live in the law and work yourself out and and, and do what your uh, God wants you to do in your life, uh, when you start depending on your performance, uh, that that is a, a sad way to go because you'll end up what you'll end up doing is depending on you instead of living in Him. And living in Him is where you need to stay, where you where you need to come to the place that you say, "Look, I'm gonna quit looking at me altogether," because I promise you, when you start living in Him and and living and encouraging and uh, uh, that encouraging life that that knowing who you are in Christ and what those scriptures say about you. And, and every time something comes up that the devil tries to, to make you feel like that you're just lowest of the low and your past has, has permanently marked you. Look here. Jesus Christ died for your past. He died for your present, and he died for your future. Now, I'm not, I'm not by no means giving you a license to sin, but I'm going to tell you something. When, when you come to the realization that God is here for 
us. Jesus died for our sins, was raised on the third day for my justification to save me, to pay for my redemption, to pay for my salvation, to pray, to pay for me walking strong in this world today. When you come to the realization of that and, and get hold of that you are accepted in Christ Jesus, you have made Jesus Lord of your life and God has accepted you in him. Look, all the sin that so easily besets you will become a, a, uh, a thing of the past. We need to quit struggling with our position in life, have our physical position in life. Let me say that. We need to quit struggling with our physical position in life and start uh, just aboundingly receiving our spiritual position because our spirit man is born again 100 percent we want we won't get any more saved tomorrow than we are today than the first minute with that that we gave jesus christ our lord heart and our our heart and our lives and accepted him into our heart and our life we're not any more saved today than we were then why because we didn't do anything other than accept that salvation christ done it all he paid for it 100% in full. And and that's the sad part about it. Christianity's made it out like, well, you got to work at it. You got to stay on it because if you don't stay on it, you you know, you're liable to mess up. Well, look, it's just like me going over here and, and buying a pizza. And we've talked about this, what we've done for the jails and the prisons over here uh, during the uh, holidays, during Christmas. You know, when I bought that pizza, it was mine. I didn't have to continue to pay for it as I as as the years went on. Look, Jesus Christ paid once for all, everybody. He paid everybody's sin. He paid for it all. And and I'm gonna tell you something. His blood, I'm not gonna discount him. And when I get out here and think that I've got to do something to help God out and uh, help help God out and keep my position, I'm discounting what Jesus done because Jesus done it all. He paid for it all. And there ain't nothing in this world for me to do other than believe what God says. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question today. Today's Friday and I want you to I want you to I want you to hear something. Now we've we've been for the last Oh, June 21st, 2021, we've been, we've been talking about who we are in Christ. And we went through that in, whole in him scripture study through Romans, through 1 Corinthians, so, through uh, 2 Corinthians, through so Galatians. And now this, uh, this is uh, week one of, of our, uh, the book of Ephesians. But I'm going to ask you something. Have you, are you getting what God wants you to have? Out of this, and I'm going to encourage you. If you hadn't went through this whole entire study with us, go back to June 21st, 2021, and get the whole thing. But are you getting what you need out of this? You say, "What do you mean?" Well, I, I'm going to tell you something, uh, and I, I've seen it happen in my life that the more I get of the truth of God's word into my heart, into my mind, and, and coming to the conclusions that, that God is true for us and and loves us and cares for us and wants more than anything for us to know it. When I get that and and understand that, honey, that you know, that makes me strong. I might the question is, are you becoming strong in this? Because I want you to be strong. That's what this is all about. So that you can do what I'm doing. And feed somebody, help them, strengthen them, help them through truth, the truth in God's word. But I've got another question for you. Are you listening to this and, and longing to know what we're talking about, but yet you've never been born again? Because that's a very important question. That's a very, very, very important question. God wants you to know that, that if you'll just give him your heart and your life, that you must be born again. And, and that's the beginning of, a, of a, a great future. All you have to do is confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you are saved. 
The Bible says in Romans 10 and 10, it says, if, if with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you? He will. He will. Let him do it today. Make Jesus Christ Lord. Confess him as Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you are saved. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. And watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen. I want want to encourage you. There's people out here in this world that desperately need a, a, a support. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're a partner of this ministry, you're, you're helping us give them that support. Because you wouldn't believe the people that hear these, these videos, these podcasts, and, and, and get in contact with us and say, thank you so much for what you're doing. Listen. If you're a partner of this ministry, you got as big a part of that as I do. I want you to understand that. If you're sowing into this ministry, you've got a major part in that because you're helping us do that. And if you're not a part of this ministry, if you're not a, a, a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into this ministry to help us reach the other millions and millions of people out here in this world that haven't heard this simple truth. So go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.